Well, what's up, Homestead homies? It's Off Good with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. I'm Stacy. And today we're gonna talk to you guys about what's in this box. You'll never believe it, and you might not even know this kind of chicken even existed. So right now we're gonna get them settled into their home. They had a long journey here, and then we're gonna talk to you guys about what kind of chicken is in here. Like, what's the big deal? Yeah. So for us here at the homestead, basically all life starts in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. This is their very first transition. So we always bring them here. We put them in the dog crates. We have several of these that work really good around the homestead for uh, breaking in an animal, uh, letting them get a little bit bigger till we move them to their forever home. And this one has two guard dogs, apparently. <laughs> um, and they don't let anybody come around the chirping of the, chi of the babies here. They're, both of our dogs are very um, sensitive when it comes to babies. They like to guard them and protect they them. They do. It's the craziest thing. They do. They sit there, especially Faith. She loves babies. She'll just lay there and watch them. And she's, they're like the protector. So when we put them in here, they'll be little guard dogs. So we're going to bring them out right now, put them inside this cage. And this is where they'll spend probably the next couple of weeks. And then we'll actually get the A-frame cleaned out and we'll transition them there into that space. But another thing we want you guys to understand is we don't have any heat lamps. We raise duck, uh, chickens, uh, guineas, everything small. Turkeys. All the way up with no heat lamps. You don't need heat lamps. Um, if there's the you know 26 of these things, if they get a little chilly, they'll all huddle together. Um, it works every time, and we've never had a problem uh, not having heat lamps to raise our babies. But just don't raise them in the middle of winter, though. It won't work then. <laughs> yeah, I mean you know you got to get them. And that's another thing. Here's a nugget for you guys, in case you want to uh, pick up a quick tip. Uh, whenever you're getting animals for butcher, don't schedule your butchering for the middle of summer. You schedule it towards the later part of fall and into early winter because the colder it is outside, the less chance you have of flies getting on your stuff, bugs, maggots, all this kind of stuff uh, that kind of interfere with your processing of your farm animals. Or early spring. Yeah, yeah. early spring, you know, when the bugs aren't out yet. Aren't they so cute? Oh, they're so fluffy. They're the cutest little things. Aren't they cute? Little fluffy fur balls. They're day old. The little fluffy fur balls. So now that we have those little chicks in their little starter home, uh, we're gonna tell you guys a little bit about them because you probably didn't even know chickens like this existed. Yeah, these are actually, um, they come from non-GMO parents. So those parents were not fed like GMO type foods. And a lot of times you'll get your chicks and you really don't know. So these are called the Freedom Rangers. We did a video a while ago about them. Last year uh, when we got some, they really worked out well. They're oh, a lot yeah. tidier than the... Um... <laughs> yeah, they are tidier. No, they are. They're more, they're like a, like a regular chicken. They're not a traditional meat Then the Cornish cross. Because that's what we used to do. We used to always have the Cornish crosses. We get them a few times throughout the year. And they're just coming at you like linebackers. All they do is lay around. They didn't scratch. They're... Their feathers wouldn't grow all the way no, in. No, they just, and they just look terrible. They just terrible. look disgusting. Yeah. So we, we got rid of those and started with the Freedom Rangers and they've actually worked out very, very well. They keep a lot of their characteristics. They get really big if you let them go out. And they out. get big quick. And last, the last time we did them, I think they, I mean, they truly, they say they take maybe two weeks a little bit longer to get to the weight. But last year when we did them, I thought they were about the same, and, and they they're really good. I don't know if I'm biased because I like them like them better, but they 
I think they even have a better flavor. And a lot of people, that's what I was just getting ready to say, a lot of people said that they made the switch and they reported back to us that they even could taste a difference. Yeah, I could too. So we yeah. definitely could. The meat was a lot moister. Um, and again, they got kept a lot of their traits. So they do the scratching, they forage. Basking um, in the sun, they run around and they keep up with the other chickens and the other chickens accept them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that are more than the, than the Cornish crosses. So it's, it's funny, I even kept a couple hens and I have them as laying hens right now. So we're gonna keep you guys up to breast on, up to breast, see what I did there? We're gonna keep you guys up to uh, breast on what's happening with these chickens as they progress. And again, if you guys got a nugget from this video, it's gonna be, you know, schedule your butching, butchering when it gets colder outside. You don't wanna butcher in the heat of the summer. It just makes for a big mess um, and you know, tract other animals to your property if you don't dispose of everything right off the bat. Yeah, so we use, like well, a lot of times we'll do it like, Spring, maybe around the springtime and then we'll do like an early before fall a little bit when it's a little cooler and then a lot later if I'll usually like to do it around Thanksgiving even. Yeah just the cooler it is the better it is even in the dead of winter is a better time than any time during the heat of the summer. Um, so if you guys are looking for some meat birds um, if you're raising them for yourselves or even if you want to turn this into a market business you might want to consider these Freedom Rangers. They didn't give us a dime for saying it. We're just telling you guys from our own experience of raising these birds. And we started off with the Corners Cross for because, years. because that's a, what yeah. everybody else had. Yeah. So we had to get them as well. But now we've switched I over to the them. Freedom Rangers and we've really been happy with them. So, so we're excited. Yeah, so again, they haven't been vaccinated, they haven't ate any medicated feed, and they haven't had GMO parents, uh, which means they come from a good line. If you're conscious about this stuff of stock uh, that is going to produce good meat that's not tainted and full of stuff that you really are, you, that you wouldn't eat, uh, let alone feed your animals. Yeah, they could be wearing a little um, pin that says, I'm from a non-GMO parent, <laughs> right? So hopefully you guys got a nugget out of this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget, you can always check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's it for us today. Stay tuned as we walk you guys through this process of us raising up these birds. Uh, we'll try to peek in on them at least once a week for you guys. And uh, that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video. See ya. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a homestead homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will see you tomorrow. tomorrow.